Hey everyone, this is Jorge Barba from the Big Band Podcast. Today I'm joined by Sunil. He is the CEO and co-founder of Idea Farms and a uh, design thinking um, super, super intense practitioner. <laughs> it takes it seriously. Sunil, how are you? Thank you, thank you so much for uh, joining me. Oh, I think I should thank you for having me on this uh, chat. And yeah. Let's see how we can move forward. <laughs> So our, our chat is going to be focused on demystifying design thinking. Um, so for a little bit of background from people who are listening, uh, Sunil and I met through Twitter, as do most of my guests do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we went back and forth in some design thinking um, discussions, <laughs> uh, I, you know, in the chats and whatnot. And then I remember, I remember you posting me or clicking, linking me to a conversation on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, had to do with, uh, you know, this topic, precisely this topic. So it's only right that we bring it to to the, you know, we actually put, you know, came together and, and, and chatted about it here. <laughs> Good. So it's, uh, it's uh, a very interesting topic. And I think there are lots of flavors. I think there are lots of vendors of uh, design thinking. Um, lots is going on. Some of it is good. Some of it is very dangerous. And it also depends on you know who's doing what. So this doesn't have to do only with design thinking. But I think uh, the general way or practice of business, general, I'm not judging anybody or trying to accuse anybody. but. I think people find it a lot easier to do business by exploiting the ignorance of their customer rather than educating them and bringing them up to speed yeah. and then trying to have an intelligent conversation. Now, and I don't think that these people are even aware that they are actually doing that. It's just that they have their own limitation and uh, when there is opportunity, then everybody tries to capitalize on that opportunity in the best way that they can. Uh, my, I think the trouble basically is that unsuspecting business people, they hear this word, word design, which is a very mysterious term anyway. Everybody thinks it has different meanings associated with design. Yeah. And when Absolutely. it borders on liberal, liberal arts and uh, you know more, more of the tactical stuff, it ends up being something that's very pretty is what a designer does. Yeah. But I think designers do things which are very, very different. Need to analyze what's happening. User who's who's going to be paying for all the stuff that we do in our businesses, right? Great yeah. idea to simplify this and to simplify it for people to understand the basics. So that they're prepared yeah. when they are approached by providers and they know what they're getting into. So so what do you think is um, has been the approach? I mean, I've I've uh, I don't want, I don't want to sound um, too aggressive, but in the past what I've said to uh, you know potential prospects or you know clients that have been coming to me for any type of thing, I've always been very upfront with people and said, you know what, I don't take advantage of people. <laughs> I'd rather, I'm going to educate you. I'm not going to you know, take advantage of your ignorance. <laughs> um, and if, if you want to be taken advantage of, then we're, we're not here to talk. <laughs> in, in, in other words, I'm going to BS you. Right. Um, so you just, you just brought it up. So what is, what is your approach? I come to my approach uh, as, as basically you see what I think is that if you look at businesses, every business, whether in the past or today, is actually looking for a value proposition that can make money for them. The reason you're in business is because you want to make money. Whether you want to make that money and put it into your own pocket and do, or do something else with it is not the question. Yeah. And then uh, if, you, if you can identify either because the market has a demand for it or there is a scope for a particular value proposition, then the next thing you want to consider is, well, what is the current state of the art of technology? Where is technology going? 
and uh, you know how do i create something where i can be one step ahead of the curve now these two are very critical aspects and i think all business guys uh, business you know how do i make a business case and see if this is going to make me money and then on the yeah. other side you have a bunch of people who are doing all kinds of technology so if today if you look at the kind of technology capability that exists and the speed at which disruption is being created by technology so if you look at ai robotics you look at uh, what else cognitive sciences analytics everybody is creating a startup out there the big guys are also creating stuff for example the ibm uh, Bluemix is also got its own Watson that it picks up for artificial intelligence. Yeah. So you've got all this stuff that's happening around on that. At the end of the day, uh, you also need something that you want to create that is desired by your end customer. And that dimension has been missing for a very, very long time because it was one customers did not have too much of a voice. They were not empowered to talk to a brand or even go away from a brand. Today they are empowered because of the smartphone, thanks to Steve Jobs, right? And uh, they can talk directly to the brand. They can go to brands and tell them that what they think about them. They can also converse, which is the more powerful one, is the word of mouth and peer-to-peer uh, -peer communication. So when we have a community that we've built, that community has knowledge, which probably even the brands don't have, right? So now what's happening, just look at what's happening, because this has been the missing element. A lot of people have jumped on the bandwagon and tried to say that, well, we are human-centered designers, and all you need to do is to learn human-centered design, become empathetic, and the problem <laughs> gets solved. That's not the way it gets solved, right? You still need to keep, keep all this in view. Now, so that's on the provider side. And then if you look at also, some of the people who are getting into the provision of uh, design thinking capability for customers or bringing this uh, to customers, just because the word design exists in it, designers think that they can actually go and do design thinking uh, consulting, right? Uh, I'm sorry, but I will say it the way I feel it. Designers are bad design thinkers. You know, <laughs> uh, Raymond Loewy very famously said, design is too important to be left to designers. <laughs> you know, that's the way I get it as well. That's good. So, so, so what, what ends up happening is that what's happening with designers is that they don't want to get out of their expertise. So while they will keep ex accusing technologists of not taking a role which is larger than technology, or they will keep accusing business people not uh, understanding the value that designers bring to the table, I think they are themselves guilty of not wanting to understand what uh, value that they are, they are supposed to give to the business and measurable value because that's what business is looking at so now people feel designers i've seen a lot of designers have started feeling that the word design thinking means that it is their turf which they have to fiercely protect and when they see uh, people collaborating and creating uh, the very simple methodology going through testing their ideas and prototyping the ideas they look at it very disdainfully and critically and say well this means that anybody can use a bunch of colored post-its and stick them on the wall and become designers. Well, nobody said that to them, to anybody. Yeah. All we are saying is that businesses can use the design approaches to solve problems of strategy of business. They're not going there to try and replace the design skills. Yeah. Okay. And now let's talk about the last stakeholder, which is the customer. Unfortunately, customers, because the whole thing looks so simple, they uh, and this is very personal. I've seen it happen with my clients as well. We do a two-day introductory workshop for very senior management of companies, mid-sized companies. Uh, I'm often told that you know this is basically common sense, and we've been doing it all our lives. <laughs> so they, they get the feeling that there's no value to be added by design thinking. And I tell them that, yes, you have been doing it, but you just don't know that you've been doing it. And what we are trying to do is to try and explain to you the value of a structured methodology, uh, a kind of a mindset that is more exploratory than, you know, uh, one right answer kind of a thing um, childlike uh, behavior enthusiasm curiosity all the stuff that we have always talked about right so i think the problem on the customer side is that they do a two day workshop and they think that they don't need any more practice and they don't need to you know learn anything more about design thinking so that's the that's the kind of mess that we have today right now 
I don't have the answer, but I'm just telling you that this is the perception, or this is this is the way I would encapsulate the entire uh, scenario of design thinking. And I think a lot of this, I think, is a worldwide phenomenon. It's not just uh, you know local to India or to Mexico or to the U.S. or Europe or Japan, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, from no, my, no, from my, my perspective, my perspective um, I see a lot I of. See a lot um, of uh, the you know assumption that it will save you. <laughs> um, they see, yeah, like you yeah. said, they yes. see post-it notes on the wall. Yeah. They see all these things on the wall. They think they have the answer right there in front of them, and voila, right? That's it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> 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 um, you know that it's funny because if you show them a picture that you've done that, it's more more, more likely that they'll say yeah. You know, they'll put down a check for you <laughs> um, yes. just just based on seeing you putting post-its on a wall right. um, when that's not even the uh, you know that's not even the the, the main thing um, that's just the tool um, then you know the, the regarding with regards to because uh, you and I had a, a little back and forth yesterday I think it was yesterday uh, or, or, or the day before about uh, you know the, the importance of empathy and teaching people empathy <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. and you just mentioned something that they said that that they actually do it inside companies i mean i've i've heard i've heard this before in my my case in my different engagements that they'll say that they do uh understand their customers and i'm like but is your is your opinion based on it's an informed opinion or is it based on you just think this is what they're going <laughs> to i mean in, in other words in other words, are we are we just throwing ideas, or are we searching for insights and then basing our ideas on those insights? It's completely different. Yes. <laughs> and an insight is, is supposed to, an insight is supposed to surprise you. Yes. Because it's it's going to shift your it's going to shift your perspective instead of you just thinking it's the same way. So I think I think really that's the the part that people don't. Um, it's hard for them to, you know, to make that. That jump before you actually show them how to do it, or or, or show them the evidence <laughs> that yeah. there's indeed something else going on there. <laughs> um, and and the, the way I've I've always approached it is uh, because some you know it's it, you know you know you know you know you know this it's it's not getting insights is not easy. <laughs> um, it's not the uh, absolutely it's, it's very not, and, it's not and, a, it's not a but it, yeah. yeah it's not a button you it's not a button you push and then you know, you know, you get an answer. I mean, it's not like that. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very deep. Um, you know, you have to, you have. To, there's a various things that are at play here for for you to arrive at at, at, at certain insight or even just one or various ones. And that process for me is the one that that companies are reluctant to accept because they want just the quick answers. They think we're we're hiring you for the answers. Yes. I'm like, no, you're not hiring for the answers. You're hiring me to. to <laughs> to, to 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 you know to to let's uh, you know this is what you do let's let's do this right this is this is a completely different approach I mean that's that's why we're we're talking <laughs> or you're not right. you're not here to pay me for my answers I I have no idea <laughs> I have no yeah. answers <laughs> they don't like that at all because they think that they're hiring see what has happened is a lot of consultants have gone there telling them that they will uh, they they need to be paid to give answers maybe that they give three answers from which these guys can pick. Yeah. But you're so right, uh, George. What what's really happening is, you know, uh, a lot of people. So let me start with where, where you came from. You know, when I have the assumption, then I'm in, in empathy. The critical part is to think as the user and not for the user. Yeah. Right. And most of these people have been thinking for the user. They've been playing God, and all the time, what they think is that they are Steve Jobs and they can do exactly. So I've been asked this question many, many times. You are telling us that we should be doing this, but Steve Jobs never did it. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, you know, you don't know Steve Jobs did it or didn't know, uh, do it, yeah. and there's no way we are going to find out because the guy isn't around anymore, right? Yeah. But not not all of us are Steve Jobs. I mean, he had he had I, he put in a lot of effort to try and understand human behavior. He put in a lot of effort to understand how technology would influence and how he could use human behavior insights, right? Now, these guys don't understand that insights can also be wrong. If you look at Steve Jobs' journey, there are many places where he had insights and he burnt his fingers because he tried to do that and it didn't work, right? 
So yeah. one is that they want right answers, and the second thing is yeah. that they they want right answers always. They just cannot cannot deal with the wrong answer, right? So you're so right, you know, because these guys need to have that complete shift to become childlike, have a beginner's mindset, learn to be comfortable with exploring. So I'll give you an example. Every time I go and talk to these people, one of the questions that invariably comes up is, "All this is great stuff, and I, I'm sure we can do it." Uh, they do. They ask two questions. One is that you know, can I can we use design thinking for everything? You know. So basically, what they're trying to do is to say, if you can commit to us that we can throw away all the stuff that we've learned all our lives, and only do design thinking, will it work for us? And I tell them, well, this is not a replacement for what you've been doing. <laughs> it's an added piece in your toolkit, right? You want to use it, right? The other question that they always ask is, uh, but we we don't have time to do this. You know, what do you mean you don't have time to do this? So I said, you, you must understand. You can keep solving the wrong problem. In the best manner possible, but it will still always be the wrong problem. And so you can keep solving the wrong problem and wondering as to where the time went, or you can take the time in the beginning to figure out what you need to do and explore the alternative so that you've got the insight and you've got into a radical shift in in the value proposition. In which case, not only have you saved time, but you've saved money, you've saved grief, you've saved effort. and that's what you got to learn but the problem is that education system has come from a perspective where we came from a world of right answers we came from a, a, a world where we have to trust our own successes and our own experience we we are the experts the uh, the customer is an idiot you know these are the kind of things we've grown up thinking so i think there's a 2 3 year window where half the guys that get it will actually come on on one side or the guys that don't get it will go through the kodaks and the nokia moments of their lifetime and they'll just become irrelevant and fall by the wayside that's what i think yeah when i've uh, i i'm just remember a few engagements um but this is this is some time ago so i re- i remember what i used to do was i i i never accepted what the client wanted or what the client was saying i was saying that's you in this context but i'm going to jump in and i'm then, i'm going to bring you some a different perspective <laughs> and that was my way to uh to shut down that need for them to have the the answer right me the opportunity to to provide you with a different <laughs> a different perspective right and and not just on me just sitting down and you know just the uh, blurting stuff out but i actually Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I had this client um, that had like a type of uh, I don't know what you call them the the costumes like a Mickey Mouse costume. Uh huh. Yeah, I know what you mean. What the children are seeing when they interact with this thing. And they're like, "Why do you want to do that? It's very hot." And I'm like, "I don't, don't care. I want to see what's going on, <laughs> right? Because I wanted to see how the children act in the costume when there's a there's an actual person in there." And then, and I basically when when I finished my, I did it. I did that three times before before I actually gave him an answer or gave him anything. And when I told him was, "Listen, the reason I did this because I I want to care. <laughs> um, if I don't care." Then I don't care. I'm just going to give you whatever answer I want. <laughs> But if I care, if I care for the children, if I care for the parents, if I care for everybody else who's involved in all this, then I'm going to give you my my best effort to uh, to figure out, you know, a better approach to this whole thing. And that's that kind of shifted their thing because now it's it's coming from my my situation is me. Pu- I put on the suit, I did all of that, <laughs> and they had a little more respect for that <laughs> as opposed to me just wanting to give them answers. And then what happened was is other people started putting the suit on. <laughs> so, so I I was I was betting on that happening. I wasn't sure people would follow through, but I knew if I if I did it the right way, other people want to put it on. And then if that happened for me was the point where I would say, now I got them in because now they got to put it on, and now they're they're framing their that whole thing. completely different than just putting a suit on and and you know spending a bunch of hours in it and and you know sweating their their butts off now it's about 
man, it's, you know, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? Right. <laughs> it's completely right. different. It's very different. So my approach has always been with with companies who are reluctant to to listen. It's like you told me the the, the last time we, we chatted is that, you know, you put your you bet on yourself and tell them, listen, I'll put my cost front because <laughs> otherwise otherwise we're going nowhere. I mean, they're just reluctant. They're skeptical. You know, they want all these answers and you're like, no, <laughs> it's not going to happen, man. There's not no button you're going to click on me that's just going to. You know, give you the right answer. I mean, we don't know, <laughs> right? And also, there is a there. I think there's a a great enthusiasm on the design thinking provider side, who are kind of not demystifying or not clarifying that design thinking is not the buy all and end all. So, when when you go through design thinking, yeah. you are probably better equipped to understand what you want and what the value proposition should be. And you're also better equipped to be able to hire the right kind of design guys to be able to execute on that, which means that the design doing piece is very, very critical. Yeah. So this is the other mistake that many of these companies are making, where they think that you don't really need design skills. So you do design thinking workshops and uh, do one project in design thinking, and now you don't need to hire designers anymore. You know. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Which, which, what I what I've done in the past, and it just came very intuitive for me, is I said, you know, I want people with certain uh, you know, in terms of develop, you know, creating a team, putting a team together is people with certain traits before the tools, because if right. the tool is not going to save you, the tool is not going to save you if you don't have the trait. Um, it's going to take you a lot of time to to arrive and make that shift. But if you could you put somebody who's who's a naturally empathetic <laughs> and has a cu natural curiosity towards things and just understanding and then de deconstructing them, then the tools you know, for them, the tools are going to be like, wow, right? It's going to be an extra, an extra added bonus <laughs> yes, <laughs> because they already yes. see the world completely different. Really? But, you know, it's, it, I, I remember a company telling me, do you have, you know, like asking me, what tools do you use? And I'm like, who cares what tools do I use? <laughs> I mean, you, are you buying the tools? Or are, you buying, are you buying the, the capability? <laughs> yes. And That's see, also... <laughs> yeah, you hire people with this, with certain traits and certain talents, and then the tools amplify that. <laughs> yes, and the tools give you reliability and repeatability and stuff like that. But you can't replace the guy that's actually you know doing all the heavy lifting right in the beginning. Yeah. See, also if you look at the Indian context, and I don't uh, know if uh, you are familiar with this, we have come from you know you if you've noticed india came on the world map because of their it capability but when when you look at it you also understand that the it capability was purely a programming capability so there was no design coming from india right so if you look yeah. around today also you don't find very very many indian design products that are being even sold in india forget about the rest of the world so the paradox is that you've got Indians who are going and running the, the American economy. They're very smart and they can do all of that sitting in America. But the Indian ecosystem yeah. does not allow for that. And as a re result of that, what has happened is that because the IT community was always talking about, you know, man hour rates and, you know, this is what this is the kind of effort it will take. And they were building their whole business on it. Today, when you talk about design thinking, they're still trying to do bean counting in terms of how many hours will it take for you to come and do the workshop for us. And I'm telling them, you know, this is this is not an hourly rate kind of a thing, right? No, you cannot yeah. say that if it's a two-day workshop, it means it's 12 hours. And if I want one hour, I can just divide it by 12 or some nonsense of that kind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so these kind of mindsets are way beyond the design thinking part of it. But, you know, these, these are deeply rooted mindsets within certain cultures, business cultures, within the national culture. So I think there's a lot of scope and opportunity for us to even use design thinking to show them the value of you know getting out of that mode of thinking and trying to measure value qualitatively and quantitatively at the end of the chain. Yeah, so that's another another dimension. So like in, in Mexico, in Mexico is is uh famous for uh you know cheap manufacturing labor <laughs> um and th then now there's a this shift towards you know we're a tech or we're evolving towards tech <laughs> you know like india <laughs> like india yeah um i always i always digress with that because it's not you know so where i'm located at is is uh, right across the border from the us and about 
it's gonna be six, it's gonna be six years now in March in May. We uh we are you familiar with Startup Weekend? Yes. Okay, so so what what three friends and I did six years ago, you know, plus almost six years ago now, is we we brought the first Startup Weekend to Tijuana. Okay. So what happened was it was this whole big deal because people, I mean, the word entrepreneurship and you know startups and all this other stuff you know it just didn't you know it'd be pockets of people who understood this or even done it right so right. now we brought it in um and then that jump started like the whole the whole ecosystem down here to uh you know more start weekends more activities that the government started getting involved the government developed their own incubator you know all these things local universities start developing their own incubators but but you know it's based on on, I remember because people started coming down with uh, with methodologies, and and I would be like, I mean, people who are coming to these events think that they're gonna take this methodology and that's gonna make an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right? So no, that's not the point. And now, um, <laughs> that's not the point. I mean, that's not even that's. I mean, I. I the, the whole thing about Star Weekend is getting people out of their comfort zone, but it's not to, to make them think that they're entrepreneurs because they are, they went to an event and then they developed something with other people. Right. It's just to get them out of the comfort zone. To be an and to be an entrepreneur is completely it's a completely different journey. But you know now we're in the phase where in Mexico we're in the phase where um, there's actual uh, in in, in terms of policy you know policy there's there's you know certain items there that are pointing towards becoming a tech a tech-based, uh, like 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 India. Um, the problem is, is that um, the 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 whole the whole framing of very cheap labor that's very hard to make it disappear. <laughs> um, that like 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 in, like in India, right? I mean, similar. It's very similar too. Um, and what I tell people is that you know how many how many people around the world are actually using Mexican Mexican products, <laughs> and they're like they can't they can't name one, <laughs> right. they can't they can't name one, and I'm like I can't name one either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I know I know industrially they do, but in terms of like you know consumer products there isn't there isn't any. there just isn't there isn't and the design language when you take up talk about design language. Um, I like I like design since I was a kid, so I've always liked cars and you know supercars and all these things. So I've always paid attention to those types of things. I'm very influenced by, so I pay attention to these things. But in Mexico, there's they think there's a design language, but in design language there isn't one, because it's a it's a it's just very. I mean, if you pay attention to it, um, you can see that there's layers of other things going on there that they're talking about design language but it's not really one it's just a cheap copy of something so when we talk about like design thinking all these things i'm like i'm i'm, I'm approaching it from the perspective of you know let's push against what's already there and let's you know let's develop an actual an actual purpose new purpose for this uh it's very hard for them it's very very hard and it's culture shock it's culture shock to uh to to make him think that you know, there's different ways of approaching certain situations, and you don't have to approach them the same way as a Mexican would do it. So I'd, I'd like to say that this is the Mexican way. Well, let's not do it Mexican way. Let's do it differently. <laughs> yes. So by, I think you've made some very, very great points here. And I think, uh, you know, we, I think people get stuck on a certain table um, when I know that there's something which I can use as a methodology so I can switch off my brain and let things happen on their own. And a lot of people get tremendous amount of comfort from the tools and they do it the other way around. In fact, you should be starting with the mindset and then going and doing the tools. So it's, I mean, the analogy I would give is that you don't go and put a nail on the wall and then figure out what you want to put up there, right? Yeah. It's actually the other way around. What you want to do is, hey, I need to put a painting up here and it will look good here. That's what you do first, right? So if you've not got that weight, you just go and put, hammer some nails on all your walls and then figure out what do I go and put on each one of them. Yes, That's correct. exactly the way these people are thinking. Correct. Now, what are your thoughts on on you know so many practitioners with uh, you know with the you know these these uh, approaching 
I want to. I don't want to say cheapen it up, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it seems that way because since they're selling the tools, it becomes a point now a competition for tools. <laughs> sure, who has the who has who has the most science, nice sounding tool, the most uh, eloquent way of putting a, a, of naming a tool when it's all the damn same. <laughs> You're right. So my thoughts are, I think, very aligned to what you are saying. I think the answer is in your question itself. Because what people are doing is, uh, we started this today's chat with that. You know, both you and I do not want to uh, fill our pockets by exploiting the ignorance of the customer. We'd rather bring them up and show them this is the way it's, it should be. This is the value that you're going to get out of it. Uh, we will help you as in, in your journey of design or as design thinking uh, uh, projects that you do. But in the beginning, you need to be able to thinking and help yourself. I mean, you cannot keep using consultants for everything. This is basically like, if I'm ill, then I need a doctor. But if I just want to maintain a good, good lifestyle, if I'm talking about well-being, I don't need a doctor. I need to do it myself, right? And that's where companies need to go. So my thought is that a lot of people, again, like I said in the very beginning, I don't blame them because that's all they know, right? <laughs> so they've, they've learned that marketing is the best thing to do. Make sure it looks attractive. Take it and give it to them. After all, the guy is paying for it. And if he, if he is not uh, wise enough to figure out what I'm selling to him and is willing to pay, then why? Uh, it's not my responsibility. So I think we need to step up the responsibility of design, first of all. Number one, I think it will start with the education system of design. And I know that the education system needs a huge amount of disruption, if not demolition. But I think there would be a lot of power if we could collaborate, people like you, me, and some others that we keep talking on Twitter. If we could collaborate and get a, a sort of a design thinking language, not a design language, but a design thinking language, which gives clients and users and consumers a very dumbed down way of understanding the power of design thinking. And so they should be able to pick and choose that, yes, I need design thinking now and I need help with it, or I can do it on my own, or I don't need it right now. So uh, I, I am a little apolitical, getting a little apolitical here. I think it's all a big uh, bunch of bullshitting that is going on by practitioners. Today. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. I'm also one of them. But, <laughs> but then, you know, it takes all kinds to make the world of design thinking, I guess. What is your, uh, in, you know, from your experience, um, in your, in your, let's say, how, how, how do I frame this? You know, clients of yours, former clients of yours, who have this, what's, what have been the, what have have been the, I don't, uh, what, do you, what how, do, how do you say it? The, I mean, the signals, the reasons why they understood it, they approached it the right way. What do you think that happened? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I got what you're ask, asking me. Yeah, like in in let's say your success stories in terms of your clients, you know, previous clients, existing clients you have, or have had. Um, why do you think they 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 embraced design thinking, and how did they embrace it? I will tell you a very recent uh, example. Um, we did a we did a so what we do is our design thinking program is still evolving so i wouldn't want to uh, sound like you know i've already been there done that i've done a lot of design different stuff that i spoke about when we last spoke but uh, at this point of time my strategy or what i'm trying to do is that I, we have a two day introduction introductory and sensitization workshop for senior management uh, so what we do on the on day 1 is basically introduce them to the mindsets and we talk about the mindsets and we reinforce the mindsets throughout the day. And we have adapted the D-School five-step methodology of the six models that exist today. We've uh, kind of taken the D-School model and tried to put our own spin on that together. We get them to do hands-on uh, experience, the entire five-step methodology. We get them to present what they have done at the end of it and try to get a sense of you know where they are between the time that they came into the workshop and where they are when they're leaving. My sense generally has been that all of them come in you know, with a great sense of curiosity because everybody's heard this word design thinking. They haven't done it before. They've seen 
case studies on the internet and stuff like that and they're quite curious to know you know how does it work and why how does it apply to them but they also are very very skeptical because they don't like the word design that much and they think that this is all going to be you know some beautification and how do you make the product look better and stuff like that so we demystify them through that day so at the end of the first day what i've noticed and even in the last workshop this is what i noticed uh, the curiosity is gone you know because they've seen exactly what has happened and they've tested it and they know exactly what they've done through the whole thing in fact uh, most of them say that they've somehow got in touch with the part of themselves that they had forgotten in childhood <laughs> okay, which i think is the big thing big yeah. success for our design thinking program yeah on the second day we take them through a, a very structured process of the tools so we we do a persona a set of personas about four personas for them on a particularly uh, on the design challenge that we have taken them through the first day then we help them do an empathy mapping exercise which is you know basically what dave gray has created but we've created our own version of that and i've shared it with dave also of explain and after that we get get them to do a complete customer journey map through the whole thing so the, the last uh, workshop that we did the client kind of looked at it and said we had no idea that we have so much power in ourselves. What you have shown us in the second day is that you haven't done anything. What you have done is you've structured the exercise in a way that we were able to use those tools and come up with our own answers in a collaborative sort of way. So what, what's ended up happening is that they do definitely want a sort of, you know, what is the next step, roadmap and all that. So I've got a few inquiries coming from them. Can we, you know, do a project as we go along. Can you help us, you know, walk through the design thinking parallelly uh, on the project so that we can get a sense of how are we thinking differently? How are we doing things right in the beginning that uh, saves us a lot of money at the end? So the reception has been very, very, very good. Uh, just to close this answer, basically, I think we are a little bit lacking because we don't have that kind of delivery capability right now. We don't have that many consultants who can actually service more than one or two clients at uh, this point of time. And there's a huge demand for these workshops themselves. So, you know, yeah. I've got to kind of uh, walk that tightrope to decide what do I do? Do I really go and open up a new opportunity or do I uh, spend more time and effort in take, walking these guys a little further and then come back to the new client? So that's where we are at at this point. It's been very, very successful till now, thankfully. Uh, I don't know why it possibly has to do with the fact that, you know, I did a lot of things uh, in a different sort of way that Steve Jobs did because I've been dabbling in all kinds of things. I've got about, what, about 30 years of uh, actual design experience. And it's, I now realize that a lot of uh, design thinking experience has been there within the company and through me. Uh, we haven't really, I would be uh, wrong in saying that I actually went out and did empathy <laughs> and all of that. 100% human-centered and that's why all the work that we have done has been so uh, nicely accepted by the user community. Not so much by the clients, but more by the user. Okay, that's very good. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit um, what what I did. Uh, and I know you're going to appreciate this. Um, it, it doesn't have a, a good a good ending, but... You'll, you'll, I mean, because of the, what, 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 been, what, been, what we've been talking about, and you'll see why. But so I developed a, a workshop. Um, I think it was like seven years ago, called the Innovators DNA, based on on these uh, authors' book that they they brought out. Um, I interviewed them for my blog, and and I asked them if I could use their their uh, framework in terms of the 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 abilities that they identified as a as the starting point for a, a workshop of mine, but based on my experiences. And I said, because I'm very interested in, in approaching people from the sense of they have the tools inside of them already, we got to put them to use. So, cause it's no use for me. And I told them it's no use for me to, you know, show them some creative tools and whatnot. If they don't, if they don't, if they don't have the, you know, if they're not putting their own tools in, into play already. Right. So they gave me their blessing. And I said, go ahead and do it. Right. So I developed the, the workshop. And it's a four-hour workshop, so it's it's I open it up to anybody. Um, you know, it's just, it's not just based for, for for companies, but actual people from you know anybody who wants to take it, I'll I'll, I'll open up for them. And 
you know, at the beginning, I, I started dabbling with just the content. But then I immediately they, they wanted some more. You know, the first the first two, the first two I did, you know, I got some feedback. They were like, we want some more. And I said, Well, some more is what? So we want like, can you help us build something? And I'm like, I'm like, four hours is not enough, but yeah. And I so I did what I did is I created a process like an hour and a half, <laughs> a 90 minute process where I can get them to, to build something. And I said, the goal of this is not to make them think that they're Superman, <laughs> but rather that they can. You know, give them a good knock in the head <laughs> to wake up and just as you know just shake up their brains and what happened was when i when i started receiving the feedback you know people were you know completely changed and people were like this is like a big smack in the head <laughs> this is a big smack in the head right and the sad part about it, all this is that you know i started getting excited because i was listening to all these things and i'm like yeah it's, it's, it's working right so these people are getting you know getting hooked on it there's i'm saying they're sending messages you know i'm, I'm receiving all these emails and whatnot but then the sad part is that they get to their jobs and they can't make use of this <laughs> because uh -huh, they can't make use of it. They can't do it. They, they, they just, they're, they're blocked because obviously there's no culture inside. <laughs> um, there's no, you know, their, their managers don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, if their bosses don't give a damn, I mean, nothing. I mean, they, they're like back to square one. So I start receiving these emails. They're like, my God, but I can't put it into play. What did you recommend I do? How do I approach the situation? And then you get to the to the other part of of the side where I say, well, there's two sides of this coin. There's you, and then there's your, the organization you you you're, you're a part of. <laughs> if the organization you're a part of does not does not you know have this in them, you know, you know, this is the sad part of this story. You know, you're gonna get blocked <laughs> unless you're a renegade like me. You'll figure out a way, and then you'll. You know, you'll you'll find a way to conquer, but uh, that's that's not for everybody because <laughs> you you might put your job in jeopardy. But you know what I think. But I think what I I think. Sorry to have cut you there or interrupted you. I think you know you. Uh, this may be the right time to reintroduce that because today companies don't have an option. You know, so yeah. at that point of time, it was a good to have. Now it is a must have. So if you if you were to bring this back into play. <laughs> My sense is that people would would really lap it up today, and the companies would give them a lot of support because every company is looking for stuff like this today. Yeah. So maybe there's a there's a chance to even collaborate on something like this. I'm very happy to be able to, you know, if I get a sense of what it is, or if you can share the process with me. Sure. I'm going to. I will. I will actually go and open it out with my customers, with my clients, and say that we have to get George over to come and do this uh, exercise for you guys. That maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe let's talk about it. You. That that uh, may be a good way to get you into India, so we can do a face to face, not on Google, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go to India. I've never been. Um, yeah, listen, I I you know the the intent with doing that was can I shorten the the, the can I shorten this this out? I'm naturally impatient, so for me it was like how can I shorten it up, and, but not make him think that they're gonna be Superman after this, but just right. give him a good knock in the head, just give him a good knock in the head and wake them up. <laughs> And then they'll be more open to, they'll be more open to more, right? Um, so that's what I did, and it and it, and it worked. No, that's a good um, idea. I never thought of that. You know, I mean, see, sometimes you need to shake people out of where they are. I mean, guy is sleeping, and you quietly try to wake him up. He's going to keep sleeping further and further, right? So you may may have to knock him on the head, throw some cold water on his face. Then he wakes up and he looks at you, and then then things change because now he's awake, right? So I yeah, never that's a great idea, actually. Yeah, because you know, companies are reluctant to to pay for for a long drawn out process. Um, right. They they they. I mean, they're they're like, well, we got other jobs to do. You know, all this other stuff. That's a distraction. <laughs> for me, it was, you know, how do I how do I shorten this up? <laughs> but it's you're not making them think that this is it. But just to give them a good knock and just get them curious. <laughs> yes. And it worked, but like I said, you know, it's, it's sad because at the end of the day, the people couldn't do anything. They're just blocked completely by the companies. I mean, and that's just the sad part of this whole thing. But you know, what can we do? We can only we can only do so much for them. <laughs> yeah, but it also also maybe th this was a little before its time because the rest of the ecosystem may not have been ready to accept something like this. You know. Yeah. So maybe a good <laughs> chance to, to kind of. Again, see whether there is in, just do an experiment or do a prototype to see whether this is going to really make a difference right now, and maybe it will. Yeah. That, yes, right. You're right. Um. So I don't know how much time you have. 
think we have 10 minutes. I, I think we have 10 minutes. 10 minutes more? Okay. Yeah. Um, so do you do you believe in um, in in you know being you know following instincts? <laughs> And following Don't we all? Yeah, we all, we all do. But I think, I think, um, um, so you know, because you know, like you were talking, right? Uh, we live now in a in a in a state where you know we have data. <laughs> uh, we have data to uh, quote unquote back it up, <laughs> um, to give us a sense. And and because I I come from the tech world, um, and I have used data, but I'm more instinct based. So I kind of I'm kind of like half and half. <laughs> Um, right. But mo you know, at the end of the day, I always I always rely more on my instincts than the data. But I do have more people now come up to me and who are better, you know, ex you know, extremely data driven, extremely data driven. Um, I don't know if you have any experience with that, you know, dealing with people who are very yeah, data driven yeah. and then shifting into that. So what I normally tell my clients is that uh, it's a good thing to be data driven because data actually tells you the facts. But um, the, the problem I see most people doing is that they use data and uh, the facts that they get not to inform their own decision making, but to take the decision on its own using that data, which I think is a very dangerous way to do it. You know, yeah. But what you need to do is to use that data. But I mean, if, if the data could make the decision on its own, then what are you doing in that? Then you might as well go home and sleep and play golf, maybe, you know, just let the data do its work. So I think the the point there is that if you if you know that you've got a uh, it's a power tool that you've got now because you've got data coming to you whether through the big data play or through analytics or through uh, cognitive whatever data you're getting it's giving you the facts but what it doesn't tell you is that why are the facts the way they are exactly why is a consumer behaving, behaving that way so. So what what I do in the uh, design thinking workshops because we I work a lot with the tech companies and I also have the, a tech background like I told you. So Idea Farms has been a tech company in the past and now we have just brought out the design thinking coaching and advisory into being um, our mainstay. So I tell them that basically, see, you're going to get all this data, which is a great thing because earlier uh, you had to choose between data and instincts, and earlier before data was. Uh, it was expensive for you to collect that data because there was no way that you could get the data on your table or on your dashboard. Yeah. You had to rely a lot on your experience and instincts. Then comes the other side where it's all data driven. So I think the somewhere in the middle is where uh, the point you made about insights. You know, If you really want the right insights or you want to be more close to being able to get insights, you need both. You need data driven stuff and you also need your instincts because your instincts are what are going to tell you where those insights are coming from. They are actually the generators of insight, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I'm going to share with you uh, my, uh, I don't call it process, but um, I, I began collaborating with, uh, uh, well, you, I don't know if you know him. Uh, I'll, I'll share with you his name after we're done. But a few years, you know, not a few years, like six years ago, I, I, I started experimenting with different approaches to, uh, <laughs> or how I wanted to work, <laughs> um, and I wanted I wanted to to mesh data with with uh, with you know quantitative and qualitative. And um, I met I met uh, this guy, and he was already upfront with it, or he was already figuring out himself. So we kind of you know it was a precise moment for him and I to to meet, because uh, he was thinking the same thing, and I was thinking the same thing, and you know the the, the dots connected, and there you go, right? Um, what was interesting to me is his from his from his perspective, he approached innovation, the insight, the insight part of innovation from the perspective of journalism. <laughs> and okay. I, I never I had never thought about it, uh, even though I like journalism, I never thought about it. But he had already like 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 figured out some, like certain process and actually put it to work already. So for me, it was like, there you go. That's what we need. But he mixed it up with the data. <laughs> Right, because at the end of the day, in journalism, you're looking for the truth or certain, you know, some resemblance of the truth, right? Yes. And it's the same thing with this. We're not, we're, we're busting assumptions. We're, we're, we're not looking to uh, clarify what we already think. We're, we're looking for, for, for evidence that we're, we're, we're probably wrong. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely, we are. And the journalism, the, the journalism approach is the one to take <laughs> to, to achieve. Well, that's that. an interesting. 
very very interesting point yeah yeah and i remember because when we started going after 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 projects together i would i would be in the room and you know people were be he would be explaining this whole process to people and and or the you know senior senior management and their you know bps and whatnot and they'll be like they'll be like what are you talking about what are you talking about journalism and they're like yeah we have journalists on our team <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have journalists on our team. So when you looked at the at the at the end and we put who was gonna be involved in the project, we have an actual journalist in there. <laughs> and they're like, they're like the, 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 the company will be like, well, that's interesting. They never thought about it that way. And I was like, yeah, that's what we do. You know, we have to, you know, and we, we like, you know, innovation is all, all about diverse perspectives and different, different, um, different skill sets coming together. To do something and, and the journalism is very important in this thing because he helps us dig deeper and find out the truth not just based on our opinions <laughs> and that changes everything it changes i mean it changes everything because you're approaching you're approaching this from the right way you know from the right frame of mind um in in terms of you know we're probably going to be wrong so let's figure out why we're, we're going to be wrong <laughs> cool <laughs> so uh what else neil what else I, I have a feeling you and i can go on and on yeah yeah and i, I don't <laughs> think anyone is going to listen to what we are recording out here so maybe we should do a three-part or four-part series on each one of uh, the angles that we've discussed today and yeah deep dive in those kind of areas very good what i'll do is i'll i'll, I'll write up a blog post <laughs> And put right. this video on there, and then I'll say part one of of we've got to figure out that <laughs> we've, we've, we've got to figure out which how many parts. <laughs> how many parts? No, and we could also bring in a few other people into the conversation as we go along. I mean, anybody who you you have in mind, or I can think of somebody who we, you can interview. Yeah. See, I think it's Absolutely. very important to get get uh, this design thinking business uh, serious enough and demystified to an extent where. Everybody who is a stakeholder of design thinking should kind of go into it with their eyes open. And I, I don't think there's too much uh, time before people get found out about their capability and the value that they're providing. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. All right, Sunil. Well, uh, thank you so much for, for joining me. Um, and I look forward to our, to our, next, our next chat. Um, how can people find you online? Even though, even Twitter? though you told me you're, even though you told me you're a private person, <laughs> <laughs> so you can find you can find me online on Twitter, which is at Sunil Malhotra. I think you have that handle with you. Yeah, I I have a LinkedIn profile. Uh, my LinkedIn profile. I have to see what it is. Maybe I can send it to you. Yeah, send it to me, and I'll put it on the blog post. Yeah, and then you can also look me. You can't look me up, but you can look up uh, ideafarms.com. Ideafarms.com. Very good. All right. Well, Sunil, th again, thanks so much, and um, have a great weekend. It's Friday. I, I, I guess it's a uh, Saturday for you, no? <laughs> or or the end no, of Friday. It's Friday, night. it's Friday morning for you. It's Friday night for me. So yeah, it's thank God it's Friday. Correct. And so I need to thank you a lot because I think you know very quickly after we connected online, you've uh, actually got me to come and talk about it. I am a private person, but I'm very very passionate. Uh, about design design thinking and uh, in a way that it can make a difference uh, even a small difference to communities and to humanity well thank so, you so much full, full, full gratitude to you thank you so much and if i can do anything for you please feel free to ask thank you so much and likewise likewise i i i, I uh i appreciate you taking the time to uh to chat with me <laughs> and uh you know Here's to a to a you know a, a friendship with long long uh, relationship. Yes, absolutely. I can I can already sense it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Sunil. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna end our chat and. Um... <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. Take care, George. Thank you very much.